Hello friends, my name is Isaac Amano Teyowetu. Today I'll be speaking on overview of Aitken data square method and a numerical analysis. Let's get started. I'll be talking about, talking on the background of Aitken's method, how to derive this method, working with the Aitken's algorithm, finding root with fixed point iteration then eventually we'll look at the problem using the fixed point iteration and then Aitken and the Aitken method when you have an iterative method which generates a sequences a set of sequences converging linearly we can now up, we can apply the Aitken's method to speed up the rate of convergence and this Aitken's method is said to be named after Alexander Aitken in 1926. How then do you derive this Aitken, Aitken's data square method? Suppose we have an approximate value xn minus or a root such that the difference between these two terms is delta n and there exists a certain scalar lambda belonging to a set of rare numbers such that the scalar times delta n will give us delta n plus 1 and our delta n plus 1 is is the same as is xn plus 1 minus alpha when you multiply the scalar by delta n plus 1 we have delta n plus 2 and our delta n plus 2 is the same as xn plus 2 minus alpha. Then we can now go ahead to divide equation 1 by equation 2, which gives rise to equation 3. We cross multiply to, to get equation 4. We then cancel out our lambdas to get equation 5. But we know our delta n plus 1 here is the same as xn plus 1 minus alpha. And our Data n here is x n minus alpha, and our data n plus two here is the same as x n plus two minus alpha. When we substitute them, when we substitute it, then eventually we happens to get equation six. Then we then expand the equation. We then expand equation six to get equation seven. We cancel out our lambdas, our alpha here, upper square to get equation 7. We then move, go ahead to group like terms by putting all the terms with the alpha to the left hand side. And then equation by getting to get equation 10, we then factor our alpha out to get this equation. Then eventually we divide the whole of this, we divide the left hand side by this and the right hand side by also this to get equation 11. Now, to continue with our derivation, we want to substitute the whole of this one in place of xn plus 2 here. But we realize that these two terms is not part of the numerator, it's not part of the term here. So uh, when we substitute the whole of this term here, we have to do something to still be able to subtract the whole of this term here. Like it's, it's like create and destroy. So what we have here, we have to substitute the whole of this term here. So like I've already said, these two terms is not part of the numerator. So we then finally have to subtract it here. So that's why we have the subtract, the, sub, the minus sign here. Having obtained this one here, we then go ahead to multiply multiply through which eventually we happens to get equation 13 here. We do a little rearrangement to and then fa factor the negative out which we happen to get equation 14. Then we can now express equation 14. I mean we can now express these three terms in terms of base. We can now express these terms, these terms in terms of this. 
which give rise to equation 15. We then divide through, divide, we split the terms, divide this one by this, which we got this, and then we maintain this one over this, which gives rise to this. And then equation 16 is our Aitken's method. Now we are look we want to derive this is the final step of the Aitken's method. We want to see how best to be to be able to work with this Aitken's algorithm. Like a, like so when you have a when you have an iterated method which converges linearly, we first of all get our initial gets substitute our initial guess to get x1 we use the x1 to get x2 and to get x3 we substitute it into the Atkins method to get our x3 so get if you are writing a computer program we equate our x3 to our x0 and start the whole process again and so to get equation to get x4 our x4 is now our x1 and our x5 is now is now our x2 and then the next iterative process our x6 will now be our x3 again our will be our x3 again so we continue this iterative process until we happen to get a convergent value we'll look at it further so we want to now solve an an equation f of x using this interval so like so now our f of x can now be expressed in terms of x equal to the whole of this we happen to get two good equations y1 equal to x and y2 equal to the g of x which is equal to e to the power minus x our g of x, we have to get our g of x, which is of interest because we want to use the fixed point equation. You can watch my video on overview of fixed point equation. And with the initial guess, we can, with the initial guess, I, you can guess any number within this interval. It can be 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, but I choose to guess, I choose 0 0.5 within this interval. And then finding the derivative with respect to the initial guess. The absolute of it gives us a number which is less than one less than one. So hence the g of x is a good choice. When it's greater than one, then we there is a need for us to generate another g of x from this f of x. We now start with the iterative process. We substitute our x1, which gives us our x1, our x1 gives us our x2. We continue until we happen to get this convergent value. We now move ahead to look at solving the same problem, but this time around we want to incorporate the Atkins method into the fixed point iteration. So with our initial guess here, with our initial guess which is x naught here, we are from the fixed point iteration we happen to get our x1, x and x2, which we have it here, x1 and x2. We now getting this three successive terms, we substitute it into the Aitken's algorithm, which eventually we happens to get x3. So with the x3, our x3 is a good approximation. So we cannot fall on x3 to get our x4 and x5. So with the x3 that we have here, we plug into the g of expansion, which gives us our x4. Our x4 happens to get our x5. And obtaining another three successive terms, we substitute it into the Aitken's algorithm, and then eventually we happy to get our x six. And then we can observe that within just a few steps, our with the help of the Aitken's method, we happen to get a convergence value or the approximate value under consideration faster, which. In the previous one, in the previous slide, there, it shows that our given our fixed point iteration is really slow in arriving at the convergent or the approximate value.
So this has obtained our appraisal value within these three steps. These few steps shows that what involving an ITKS method in an algorithm which converges, an iterative method which converges linearly, really helps to arrive faster. Thank you. This is the end of the today's tutorial. Tutorial, and I would like you to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos. Thank you.